Good evening and welcome to Broomfield School's 2020 induction evening. Due to the current global situation, we're not able to meet you in the usual way in school. However, we hope that this evening will provide you with all the information that you and your child needs. I'm Miss Vignall, School Business Manager, and joining me this evening are Mr. Travis, our head teacher, Mrs. Horman, Assistant Head Behaviour, Welfare and Safety, Miss Fox, Assistant Head in Senko, um, and Mrs. Tansley and Mrs. Nash, who will be our 2020 Year 7 Achievement Directors. During the evening, we will be speaking to you about our transition process, showing you videos and offering you an opportunity to ask any questions that you have. Um, the evening will last no longer than an hour and will go as follows. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Just use the question box and type them in and we'll go through as many of them as we can at the end. Before we begin, I'd like to just do a quick poll so that we know who's watching this evening. Can you just let us know, the poll's going to pop up shortly, and if you can just let us know whether you are watching this on your own or with your child this evening. And if you could just vote in the box there and let us know. That's great, the votes are coming in. Okay, nearly everyone's voted now. Well, that's brilliant. That's shown us that 92% of you are watching at home with your child, which is really good to know. And it's good to know that they're going to be able to see what's going on and how transition is going to work for them at Broomfield. Now I'm going to hand over to our head teacher, Mr. Travis, to, to welcome you. Oh, good evening, everybody. We're very pleased that so many of you are able to join us for this webinar. We met uh, a number of our parents and pupils at our early taste today before the lockdown. And we're delighted that uh, so many of you are able to join us again uh, this evening. Welcome. But a very special welcome goes to the, those who are, uh, of you who are joining us for the first time. Ordinarily, of course, we would be meeting one another in person rather than virtually. And in, in spite of having had many virtual meetings of one sort or another since the start of this lockdown, this method still seems to me to be a, a little strange. However, this evening is such an important one in our school calendar that we were determined not simply to leave it to sending letters or emails back and forth. But uh, we are live and all of us are at home. Domestic life continues and children have been well fed and put to bed. The dog was taken for a long walk and is, is asleep in the corner. Um, but if there are uh, any disturbances throughout the throughout this uh, webinar, uh, please do uh, do excuse us uh, as we are all at home. The purpose of this evening is a simple one. It is to enable your children to make the best possible start in September by collecting very important information from yourselves how we may contact you, whether your child has medical needs and so on, but also by providing you with information about our systems and procedures. Before we proceed further, however, let me set the context by saying a little bit about Broomfield's vision. Our vision of education is to provide your, your sons and daughters with the very best education. Firstly, in their academic and vocational education, but also in their physical and sporting life, in their moral, social and spiritual growth, and uh, in all of the many dimensions that make up education in its fullest sense. We want your children to develop their many talents and to discover talents today and you did not know they had. We want your children, our pupils, to excel. So when your sons and daughters come to leave Broomfield School in five years time, they will be knowledgeable, intelligent, well-qualified, highly skilled, virtuous, and well-rounded individuals able to play their full part in society. To achieve this, we only need four things 
uh, from our pupils. Firstly, they are to have high aspirations. They should want to do brilliantly. Secondly, to work very hard, particularly in the classroom, but also at home through their homework. Thirdly, to listen carefully to their teachers and other staff. In short, to buy into their teaching and learning. And finally, to enjoy their education. Now, it's our job in school to do all that we can to facilitate these four things. And yours, if I may say, at home, to support and encourage them in all of this. It is important, therefore, that we have a great partnership between school and home, really working together, well together, to support one another. And with such a partnership, we shall achieve amazing things for your children. We're really looking forward to September, um, but before then, we're also looking forward to the virtual taster day that we're organizing in July. But enough from me, uh, enough from me for the moment. Uh, I'll now ask Ms. Horman to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Travis, and, and good evening, everybody. Um, as I've been introduced, I'm Mrs. Horman, and I'm the assistant head teacher for behavior, welfare, and safety. So my role in the school is to support and monitor safety, welfare, and well-being for pupils and staff alike, and in particular, of course, for our prospective year seven pupils, contributing to a smooth transition for them to Broomfield School and especially in the current climate where you or your child might have some additional worries or concerns about starting secondary school. So we're very excited this evening to share valuable information with you and hope uh, this evening we can answer almost all of your questions and provide you with some peace of mind. So now I'll be handing over to Mrs Tansley and Mrs Nash who will say a little bit more as your achievement directors next year. Thank you, Mrs. Holman. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to your Broomfield induction. My name is Mrs. Tansley, and I'm one half of your achievement director. We're very much looking forward to welcoming you to Broomfield. Year seven is a very exciting time. You are starting a new school, making new friends, and learning new subjects. Although it may seem a bit overwhelming, please don't worry. There is a huge support network at the school, and we will be here to support your transition into year seven and beyond. I very much look forward to meeting you all in the near future. Good evening. As everyone else has said, it's lovely having you all joining us this evening. I'm Mrs Nash and I'm the other half of your Achievement Director. I'm here to help you on your journey throughout Broomfield School. I will be here to celebrate all your achievements throughout the year and su support you with any challenges that you may face. Any concerns that you or your parents have, I will be here to help you. I'm looking forward to meeting you all in person and getting to know you over the coming months. I'm now going to hand you over to Mrs Fox. Hi, good evening. Um, it was great to meet so many of you at our earlier Taste Today in March of this year, but we are aware that some of you were unable to make it and many of you will be a little worried about getting to know your new school building. So Mrs Tansley and Mrs Nash have put together this tour of the school to help you get to know your new surroundings. Hello Year 6, my name's Mrs Tansley, I'm an Achievement Director at school. I'm part of the Year 7 team, so you'll meet me when you join us in Year 7. I'm a PE teacher, so if you can't find me in the hub, I'll be down in the PE department. Hi Year 6, welcome Hi. to Broomfield. My name is Mrs Nash, I'm one of your Achievement Directors. I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in September. If you ever need to find me, I'll be in the P Corridor teaching geography. Normally, as part of induction, we give you a tour around the school. But as we can't do that at the moment, we're going to give you a nice video tour. So come with me. This is the main student entrance where you'll come in each morning. Let's now go to the assembly hall. Every day in Broomfield you'll be expected to read. 
you always need to have a reading book in your bag. And if you don't have a reading book in school, there's plenty here for you to choose from. So come along and have a look. example of a secondary school classroom. Now in primary school you will have spent most of your time just in one classroom for all your different subjects. In secondary school it's a bit different. We have loads of different classrooms and you will move to different places in the school depending on what you have on your timetable. Some subjects need specialist equipment so let's go to a science lab. department, my favourite part of the school. When you're in year seven you'll do two lessons of P a week, we've got lots of different facilities to show you and you will take part in loads of different sports next year. Let's go look at the sports hall. Is the amount of outdoor space that we have for you. You have this playground which is here, behind me we've got the AstroTurf which we use for football at lunchtime and behind that you've got a massive field which is brilliant so you can use up lots of your energy and if that isn't enough behind this building we have some basketball courts but now we're going to walk you past the table tennis to the canteen where you get your lunch. Time, but you do need to bring your own bat and a ball. And our final stop on our tour of Broomfield is the canteen. This is where you can get breakfast in the morning, you can get a snack at break time and you can get a really delicious lunch. Yum! Thank you for joining us on our tour today. I know it might seem like school is really big, especially compared to what you're used to at primary school. But please don't worry, as soon as you get here we'll give you a map. And the more you walk around school, you'll learn where everything is really quickly. Okay, that's it from us. We hope you've enjoyed your tour and we can't wait to meet you when you join us in Year 7. Bye! Bye. This video will be live on YouTube so you can watch it again. You will all be given maps of the building when you start 
and our staff and older pupils are always around to point you in the right direction. So do not worry, think you're going to get lost. Usually at induction evening, with lots of our pupils around for you to speak to. Um, so tonight we have a video from some of our Year 7 pupils to tell you a little bit about life at Greenfield School. <laughs> My name is Tasia, I'm in year 7. Hello, I'm in year 7. My name is Lena and I'm in year 7. I'm in year 7. I came here last year from New Zealand and because of the good support network I managed to make a difference. When I wasn't from any primary schools around here, thanks to teachers I've been able to make really, really good friends. And I settled in the room for this as well because of the teachers. Engaging lessons as I think that they are really interesting and intriguing. The best part about Greenfield School is that we have newly refurbished science labs, we have new computers in the computing department. And the best thing about Greenfield School is that we have two football pitches, a basketball court, and three massive playgrounds. My favourite part about Greenfield is all the trips and the experiments that we do. We learn a lot and we will come out really good. We have so many trips like camping, winter wonderland and so many more. My advice to you new year sevens is to just be yourself because here at Bluefield School we accept everybody. Just try your best to work hard and keep positive. Those are my top three. My advice for all you year sixes is to just be yourself and good luck. there to up for our pupils for sending in those videos and who were so keen to get their school uniform on again when they haven't been wearing it for 12 weeks. Um, communication with our families throughout your child's time at school will be key to their success. Um, we have some great ways to communicate with you and I'm just going to show you some videos that now that show you how our school app works which is one of the best ways for you to be able to get in touch with us.
what we do ask is, however, that you keep us up to date with your. Sorry, my buttons aren't working here for a moment. We do ask that you keep us up to date with your contact numbers and details. So the email so this year. So this year, because of the current situation with the coronavirus, we've decided to offer you a somewhat different, yet very exciting and interesting full transition experience, albeit remotely. So therefore, tonight we're delivering our induction evening via this webinar, and all the documents relevant to this evening's information will be sent to you by tomorrow to complete electronically. So in addition to this evening's webinar, we will also be hosting two induction mornings and an induction afternoon. So Mrs. Fox will explain a little bit more about these events. So our first transition morning will be for those children with special educational needs, those pupils whose primary schools have said would benefit from an additional morning, and those who are the only pupils coming from a primary school. And this will be on Wednesday, July the 8th, 9.30 till 11.30 a.m. Every pupil will be individually invited, but if you feel your child would benefit, please get in touch. Then on Wednesday the 15th of July, we will have our full induction morning for all our pupils. And on the same day in the afternoon, we will be getting them together in their new form groups who, when we return to school, will meet each morning during registration. We will be sending out more details of these shortly. Earlier today, for your information, we sent out our induction pack to you. Please spend time with your child on the contents of the induction pack as part of their preparation stage to secondary school, as not all of the information from the pack will be covered tonight. Over to Mr. Travis now. Mr. Yes. Sorry about that. Um, are we going to be fully back for September? Are the boys and girls watching us um, this evening, for instance, going to be coming through our school gates in their new school uniforms? on that first day on, on the 7th of September. Well, we certainly hope so. And uh, things sound very positive when the government, uh, as it said recently, said that we will be fully open again in September. Let's, let us hope this is the case. However, it is early days, and therefore at the moment, we cannot confirm exactly when or exactly how year seven will be joining us in September. However, we want to reassure you that no matter what, whether our pupils will actually be walking through the gates or whether we'll still be operating uh, through virtual online learning, we shall be ready uh, to educate and support your child fully from the 7th of September. During this lockdown, our current pupils are working hard online through Google Classrooms, where they're able to see the work for their lessons, hand it in for marking, and get it back once it's been marked. They've also uh, had weekly assemblies and received weekly phone calls from our pastoral team. We're currently in the process of developing live stream lessons and running focused learning groups subject to tutorials for small groups of pupils. So if in September our pupils and the new year seven pupils are still not able to come into school, then uh, all, including our new pupils, will receive the same support and more. We take education very seriously, whether we are in school or whether there is remote learning. Uh, we will not let our, few, our, our pupils fall behind at all. And 
all of our admissions paperwork will be sent out to you tomorrow. It will be a link to a online document that we'll need you to fill out. It will take you about 20 minutes to complete and you will need to have gone through the homeschool agreement and the ICT acceptable use policy yourself and with your child before you complete it. If you do have any issues with um, completing the forms or any questions, just please get in touch with us. Usually, we would launch our annual Year 7 Bushcraft residential trip. However, at the moment, we're not able to do this. So sadly, we've had to postpone it until 2021. We will give you more information about this special Year 7 trip as soon as we are in a position to do so. In the meantime, Year 6, what I can tell you about is the trips that have taken place this year. Our GCSE uh, students have gone to Epping Forest to um, do several river experiments as part of their GCSE geography. We have had Key Stage 3 trips to Winter Wonderland last year. We do regular trips to various museums and we have an example of the Science Museum down here in the bottom right. And in the bottom left, we have a photo from our 2019 Year 7 Bushcraft trip. As well as that, there are numerous sports teams at Broomfield. They play against other schools in Enfield and beyond even further. There's definitely something here for everybody at school. Getting into secondary school can be very difficult. You might be meeting new friends, you've got new teachers, it's a whole new building. So here's a few ways that we can help you prepare. Firstly, encourage your child to get organized for the school the evening before. This can save them and you a lot of undue stress in the morning. Remind them to check their bag is packed. Lay out uniform if necessary. Leave as little as, as possible to be done in the morning. Try and resist the temptation to do everything. Your child needs to learn to be independent and that's something we will also aim to teach them in school. Your child will also have several homework tasks to complete each night. Most schools will record this in a homework diary, which you can see is our example in the middle picture. And we will also put it on Go for Schools, which you as a parent or carer can check. Make sure you keep an eye on their diary, make sure you sign their diary, and make sure you check that they have done their homework. We recommend you have a calendar on display at home that's clearly marked with the different equipment your child needs for each day. For example, their PE kit, maybe some music equipment, if they've done some particular project work for their homework. Encourage the habit of looking at their schedule the night before and organising their school bags there and then. I am a strong advocate of putting your PE kit by the front door the night before. If your child is going to school on public transport for the first time, find out if any friends live nearby to see if they can travel together. We also recommend that you follow us on YouTube to see some of the videos that we post, which will have some of our children from the school in. And on top of that, on Instagram, we have our thought for the day, um, which goes up on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram every day during term time. Pupils have a moment to contemplate these during the school day. And we thoroughly recommend that you um, engage with it as well at home because they make great conversation starters. You will also find out lots of what is happening at Broomfield on our social media channels. So why don't you start following us tonight? Now, I'm sure that for many of you, you're interested in finding out about the school day. You're going to have lots of different teachers and lots of different classrooms, which is quite different to primary school. So here's the typical day. You start at 8.30 in the morning, where you line up outside with your registration group. Your form tutor will escort you to your registration room, where you'll follow a daily timetable. And this may be a literacy activity, a numeracy activity, or you may have an assembly. You'll have five periods in the day. Each one will be one hour long. There'll be a 20 minute break and a one hour lunch. There'll be a bell to signify the start and the end of the lesson, but we also recommend that you keep an eye on the time so you don't want to be late to any lessons. School will finish at 3.15 and then we have a huge timetable of extracurricular activities for you to take part in. So here is an example of a timetable. You will receive one of these on your first day with us. We run a two week timetable at Broomfield, so it is important that you use your diary to record which week it is so you can ensure you bring the correct equipment. Each box on your timetable contains three pieces of information. 
the subject. For example, MA represents maths, your teacher initials, and the location of the lesson. Each timetable will also contain a list of names, which will show you what the initials stand for, and these will be your teachers for each of your different subjects. It may seem confusing at the moment, especially if you've just had one teacher for the whole of year six, but I promise you it will make sense very soon once you start with this. I'm now going to hand you back to Mrs. Horman to run through our uniform expectations. So of course, uh, you can see the picture on the screen there. At Broomfield, we pride ourselves in wearing the correct uniform uh, as uniform uh, is formed a really big part of our identity at Broomfield School. Uh, you're able to purchase the full uniform and the PE kit uh, from Smith Schoolwear, which currently operate an online or an in-store uh, book, booking appointment system. So please do look at the uh, induction booklet carefully, and I suggest particularly at the footwear, as we have photographs set out specifically what type of shoes will be adequate shoes to wear at Broomfield School. I am now pleased to, to say a little something about our PTA. Broomfield School has a parent teacher association. It's relatively new and is growing. We had a number of amazing events planned for this year, but these have been put on hold for obvious reasons. We're looking forward to the time when we can make these happen, and we're very keen that our new parents join us. So if you are interested, please do let us know and we'll get you signed up. Thank you. We've spoken about our induction days, and we also have two virtual coffee mornings with the head teacher planned. One is to go happening tomorrow morning, and one on the 9th of July. These are for anyone who's not already looked around Broomfield or would like to visit again. We also hope to be able to meet you in October, either virtually or in person, to welcome you to our Broomfield family. More details of this will be sent out in September. Thank you very much. Um, I've noticed that a few of you have just put messages up to say that you couldn't hear things at certain points through that. I really do apologise for that. Hopefully that hasn't affected too many of you. But this whole recording will go up on our YouTube YouTube channel tomorrow. So if you have missed anything or any of the videos, then we will be putting that out tomorrow on YouTube for you. Um, I've seen some questions coming in, but if you do have any more questions, please just use the question box on um, your screen to ask any questions that you do have. If you do have any personal or individual questions that you don't want to ask in this forum, then please do just either email the office email address, which you can see on your screen now, or call our dedicated transition phone number that is also on the screen at the moment. So I'm having a look at the questions now. And the first one we've had is, I think I'm going to possibly ask this to Miss Tansley because it is a bit PE related. When will you be allocating house names for Year 7? Well, that's Where a very good get... question. Yeah, that's a very, very good question. And um, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that somebody else on the panel can help me out with this, but I think these students are allocated their houses on arrival because your PE kit will actually have your house name on the back of it. And you will make sure that once you know your house name, you will um, order that specific PE kit. And then you get to be part of a slightly different community in the school because the house system goes across all the different year groups. And there's lots of competitions throughout the year, lots of special assemblies where we just get the houses together. There's a really great atmosphere. I'm very competitive for my house and I hope that you will be too for yours. And just on that as well, we should have all of your houses details out to you by the time we have induction day and if you have got an older brother or sister at Brumfield then you will go into their house so you'll be in the same house that they are in. Um, now Mr Travis I think this would be a good one for you. Does the school still offer or run the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme? We do. We do this through the police cadets. Uh, Broomfield School for I think about three or four years now being very pleased to host the uh, Metropolitan Police Cadets um, and large numbers of our pupils throughout the school are members they meet uh, once a week um, on Tuesday evenings it has been once a week and uh, the earlier the, the younger pupils will meet uh, earlier in the evening and then the, the older pupils uh, meet a little later uh, and it is through 
the police cadets that we run the Duke of Edinburgh. And uh, each year, a number of our, our pupils will go for the, the bronze, the silver, and the gold. So we're delighted that that is running. It, it, it is a wonderful opportunity. So thank you for that question. And there's a couple of questions coming in about uniform. I think Mrs. Horman did mention that um, through the presentation and the information's in our induction booklet. All of our uniform is available from Smith School Wear. Um, they are open now, but only for booking. So you need to contact them first and you can arrange to go in and um, get your uniform or you can purchase it online um, through their website. Um, let's have a look what other questions do we have. Um, we have a question here, which I'm going to put to Miss Horman. Um, I think she's happy to answer it. Can my child be put in a form class with their friends? OK, so of course, um, uh, when we allocate the pupils to their forms, uh, we will have prior information from their primary schools that would give us a little bit more information about friendship groups and particular uh, other interests or things around the pupil. So, of course, where we can, we, we obviously place you in um, informed groups with pupils that you might know from your uh, primary school. However, it is an opportunity to make new friends and, of course, to expand your friendship group. So really, if you're not in a form with anybody that you know particularly or any friends, you will be seeing them at lunch or break time. And certainly, if there's any worries, you can always make sure that you speak to Mrs. Tansley or Mrs. Nash about that. But I'm sure most of the time you're probably thrilled that you've made new friends. OK, and I'm going to open this question out to the panel because I think they're all probably in quite a good position to answer this. It's what time is lunch and what's the food, which I think is always a very important question. <laughs> well, lunch, uh, if, I, if I kick off, so to speak, lunchtime is at uh, 12.15 and finishes at 1.15. We have an, an hour for lunch. Um, and uh, that, that gives the pupils opportunities to uh, not, not to have to rush their lunch, but, but to, have, to have that in a, a leisurely and proper fashion. And, and then many will go to take up the lunchtime clubs or will go and read quietly in the library. And there's also a homework club at lunchtime and after school. And uh, large numbers of boys and girls will, will either go and play football or basketball or, or just be in, in their friendship groups. Now, I haven't spoken about food. Um, I'll let somebody else uh, talk about that. I think Miss Bignall, actually, we should, we should put it back to, back okay. to her. <laughs> so the canteen is open for breakfast, morning break and lunchtime normally. Uh, breakfast is available from 7.45, so you can get to school nice and early, get some breakfast, and often there's pupils in there catching up on homework, hopefully not that's got to be handed in that day, um, okay. and meeting up with friends. Uh, and there's a selection of things like beans on toast and croissants available. Morning break is probably the most popular time of the day because there's things like cheese on toast and sandwiches. And if you're in any clubs or um, do any sports activities, you can pick up your lunch then so that then you can go and join in those activities at lunchtime. And then at lunchtime, there's always a variety of hot and cold food options, which are always very popular um, with the pupils. Uh, let's have a look what other questions. Oh, has Miss Hansi wanted to say something? Oh, um, I was going to say, and staff. Yes. <laughs> not, not just the pupils that get their lunch there. Staff do. It's very popular with everyone. Um, I've known, on food, I've been asked, is there a halal food menu? Yes, much of our food is halal, not everything. Um, but much of the food is halal. Um, someone asking me to repeat the website for the uniform. It is Smith School Wear, but it is in the booklet that you've been sent electronically. So don't worry, you will have it there. Um, and let's just have a look. I've got a question here, which is how long are detentions? Um, shall I start with Mr. Travis with that one? Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, well, we, we obviously hope that uh, our pupils will not uh, not, not behave in a way that will lead to detentions, but, but uh, obviously this, this, this does sometimes happen. Uh, they can uh, range in length. Sometimes it's just a, a, a very quick detention of, of 10 or 15 minutes. Um, uh, that, that can uh, be extended to uh, half an hour, um, and uh, often they are for an hour. 
Um, very occasionally, they may be for one and a half hours, but, but that, that is, as I say, very, very, uh, th those are in, in treatment. Um, um, we uh, give, if, if the detention is, goes beyond half an hour, then we would notify parents through text messages. But, uh, but uh, as I say, um, we like to be very positive here and hope that uh, there, there won't be a need for detentions. But, but that gives you an indication of, of their length um, if there are to be. I don't know if Ms. Horman wants to add anything to that. No, no, really nothing else to add there. So I'm very, really much reiterating that we're hoping there's not going to be any de detentions of any kind, which of course takes us to the point that if you have got any worries or concerns once you start back in a normal fashion and you haven't done your homework or or there's something that you're worried about and, and you're worried that you might be issued with a detention because we've just told you in assemblies um, there are certain things that you might be getting detentions for if you're not making sure that you're adhering to those um, then you must speak to a teacher and specifically you've got Mrs Tansley, Mrs Nash, you can always find them, you can always find me, you can find Mrs Fox and you'll soon, as you join Broomfield School, meet everybody else from the pastoral team that you would be able to talk to. And I love the way that once we start talking about lunch, all the questions start coming in. So um, I've had a question on do we pay for the lunches every time we go? Um, yes, you do, but it's all done on thumbprint um, biometrics and you have a parent pay account that um, parents can top up and then you can go in and buy your lunch using your thumbprint so you don't need to bring any money to school. Um, how much is an average meal? It really does depend. I think a hot meal a hot meal deal is around two pound fifty for lunch, um, but things like sandwiches and baguettes can be anything from sort of one pound forty upwards. Um, do we cater for wheat allergy suffer sufferers? We do. We follow all the food allergy guidance, and there's always the um, allergen information available to pupils. Um, but obviously. We expect the pupils to take more responsibility for that in secondary than perhaps they would in primary. And we um, would expect them to make sure that they're making choices and asking the questions at the counter. But when they first start, we'll obviously support them with that. Um, and was there any more food questions? Let me just check before I move on. Uh, and no, I think that's all the food questions. I'm going to put this one over to Miss Horman. And it's what is the policy on bullying? Okay, so of course, uh, bullying is absolutely not tolerated in the school and, and everybody in the school, teachers and of course our staff and all our support staff, all are committed to this. And therefore, bullying is treated very seriously and every uh, incident of bullying, if reported, is always thoroughly investigated so we can actually get to the bottom of what the issue is and then therefore try and resolve that in the most positive way for all the people pupils involved in such an incident. Uh, so we can obviously um, kind of uh, build on, on, on certain bits of information and of course offer to all the pupils an avenue of uh, improvement because of course they are still growing up and we know youngsters do make mistakes sometimes and do fall into pitfalls. So it's our job to help them all up and to try and guide them in the right direction. But if thank I can, uh, no, thank you for that, Ms. Holm. If I can add one or two words, is to say that, uh, well, just to really reiterate and emphasize the fact that that bullying is wrong. Um, uh, we will not tolerate it. Um, but um, but everything is looked into very carefully, and and all are supported so that it doesn't happen again. And part of our process, uh, through, uh, this is something that runs throughout the year, um, through assemblies, through form periods, through PSHE, and simply through to behaving nicely and properly with one another throughout the school day. And we're also very keen to involve the pupils in this anti-bullying uh, message as well. So we will have um, pupil mentors um, with whom uh, the pupils can communicate and that, that will get back to us if needs be. So we're, we are very much a strong community supporting one another. Uh, and that of course means that uh, if there is anything untoward going on, that uh, that uh, will work very strongly to 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 eradicate that and to be supportive of all. Okay, so I've got some more questions about lunch coming in, so I'm going to go back to them because it's obviously a very hot topic this evening. 
this evening. Can we bring packed lunches? Yes, you can bring your packed lunches from home. That's absolutely fine. Um, and also, if you are currently, your child currently receives free school meals, then yes, that would carry over when you come to join Broomfield. Um, I've got another question about going home for lunch if you live close by. We don't allow any of your pupils off site during the school day. Um, part of lunchtime is part of the school day and it's something that they should be participating in. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything on that. No. OK. Um, a few people are asking about support for uniform. Unfortunately, that's something that Enfield did offer, but for several years they haven't offered and it's not something that as a school we can offer. However, our uniform provider is very good at allowing you to pay for instalments between now and when you collect your uniform in September. So if you are struggling to make that purchase, if you go in and speak to them or phone them and order the uniform, then you can pay for it slowly before you collect it. Uh, Question for Miss Tansley, I think this one. Will the field be in use only for PE or in breaks as well? Well, that's a really good question and it's really dependent on the weather. The field is used in PE lessons when the weather allows us to use it. Um, and it is also open in, um, in the summer months for pupils to go out. Um, it, it's, it's a good field, it doesn't get too boggy, so when the weather's good, we do definitely get out there. But the astro pitch is always open every lunch as long as the weather is dependent that we're outside. So um, I think you'll find actually that you'll prefer playing on the pitch rather than the field anyway, because it's a much easier surface to play on. But we've got so many facilities for you to get involved in at break time, at lunch time that you, you, you're spoilt for choice, whether it's basketball, table tennis, um, the Astro pitch or the field or the massive range of extracurricular clubs that we offer in PE. Uh, Mrs Bignall, can I just give an example of the types of Sorry. clubs that yeah. we have at school? So for year seven throughout the year, we have netball, basketball, football, trampolining, um, table tennis, fitness, cricket, rugby, dance, and all of those activities also lead into a competition. So you can come and train and learn to play the sport just to enjoy it. But also if you want to take it further and you're, you're at a high enough ability to do that, then we will pick you for the team and you will go and represent Broomfield in competitions. Okay, let's just have a look and see if we've got any other can kickers shoes be worn miss nash can kickers be worn to school uh, <laughs> it's put me on the spot i'm just trying to imagine the image miss Horman, maybe you could just help me with that one quickly <laughs> yes no absolutely so of course there's a range of appropriate footwear and that's why it's really important to have a look at the pictures that we actually include in the in the booklet because all these types of shoes has have, have a variety of names and sometimes i've even got lost with what it's called and and often youngsters might just kind of pull out a name from the hat and say oh are we allowed to wear these and then we're not quite sure what they are so we have tried to make it very clear by giving you literally a list of photographs of footwear that is appropriate and kickers would be appropriate but not the boot type if i may say so i think it's got a particular name but i'm not sure what it's called but it's not we, we don't allow the boot type or any boots so it'll be a shoe a proper shoe but please look at the look at the booklet I think the key thing is that the shoes are leather um, and can be polished is what we one of the things that we normally look at if they can be polished. Yes, Miss Tansley. I just wanted to say it's so important to look at those photographs because the last thing you want to do is go out and buy a nice new pair of shoes um, for you to then wear them to school for us to say actually those aren't accepted at our school. Um, and when you go to shoe shops, there's so many on offer and some of them just push the boundaries of what are acceptable school exactly. shoes. So just look at the photos. So you're not put in that position in September when we say, actually, I'm sorry, you may have got these new for school, but they're not in line with our school policy. I think a lot Agreed, of, and I might just add students, one more thing. Sorry, Mrs. Nash. I think a lot of students work, try and wear Air Max, Nike Air Max trainers, which have the little yeah. silver um, 
buckle on the laces and sometimes they will try and take the buckle off but we can see their trainers so don't try and buy them and think that you can get away with it because i guarantee we will know we will find out and we will tell you and i think miss Horman, don't you have a don't you have a stack of spare shoes in case we do, Miss. You took the words right out of my mouth because I know the next thing is trainers. So, of course, trainers are not allowed at school. Trainers are allowed when you're doing PE and playing sports, of course. Uh, and if for some reason uh, you regularly wear trainers to school and there's no good reason and parents have not communicated that with us clearly, but it's it, it, it's very uh, obvious to us that the pupil is simply wearing their trainers because it's nice and comfy and they look very trendy because they've just bought them over the weekend. Unfortunately, you will not be allowed to wear them when you're in the school building going to your lessons. So for that, we have a selection of plimsolls. Now, those of us who are old enough know that plimsolls were very much fashion in the 80s and they still look the same. Uh, and of course, I don't think they're fashionable for the youngsters, but they are decent nice shoes and of course very hygienic and all those shoes are kept uh, clean and if worn by a previous person obviously all kept, uh, kept uh, hygienic and clean but therefore you'll have to hand your trainers in and you would be in plimsolls for the day and your parent will have to come and collect your trainers uh, and then we do the, the swap so easy one is not to wear the trainers and while we're talking about what we can and can't bring into school and wear in school and things, I'm getting a few questions about our mobile phone policy. So would someone like to answer on that? Yeah, I'll be happy to do that. Thank you. Um, we're very pleased for uh, pupils to bring in their mobile phones if that's what um, mums and dads want them to do so they're able to communicate on the way to and from school for that, that reassurance. However, in school, but we don't want to see or hear them. So as the pupil, just before the pupil comes through the school gate, they can turn them off and put them safely away. That's very important. Then, of course, they must look after them carefully over the course of the day so that they don't, um, they don't lose them or otherwise disappear because they're brought in, obviously, at the pupil's uh, and parents' own risk. Um, now, um, if we see or hear a mobile during the day, then we confiscate it and, uh, and we keep it safe and we inform mums or dads uh, via a text message and, uh, and they must come in and collect them at their own convenience during office hours. Um, and the reason for this is, well, two parts to it. One, as I've already said, we're very happy if parents would like their, to be reassured by the fact that their sons or daughters have a mobile with them as they come to and from school, particularly in the, 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 the darker months of the year. But in school, we do not want them to be in any sense a distraction, um, and therefore they're to be out of sight and turned off and out of mind. Um, I've got a question from one of our new pupils and it's directed for Mrs Tansley, um, so it's good to see that you're already getting to know your new achievement directors. Um, Mrs Tansley, are we allowed to bring anything for break on the pitch or field during lunch? So I think any equipment to play with or use? Yeah, so we have four table tennis tables as you saw in the video. Um, and so if you want to play there, then you need to bring your own equipment and a new a bat and a ball are very reasonably priced from somewhere like Sports Direct. So I would strongly recommend that you do purchase that over the summer if you can. And then you get to play table tennis at break time and at lunchtime. If you want to bring a football into school, it is your responsibility and it has to be kept in a bag. If we see a, kit, a football rolling down the corridor, I will take it and put it in the office. So. You need to bring it safely somewhere that it can go in the bottom of your bag, out the way during your lessons, and then you can use it in your free time. Unfortunately, we can't lend out PE equipment during um, break time and lunch time because we would have to supervise it and we're doing our clubs at that point. So the answer is yes, you can bring your own equipment, but it must be something that you can look after and something that can go in a bag away during your lesson time. Um, and I just had a question in Mr. Travis on and Ms. Horman on the phone policy. If the phone is confiscated, can it be given back to the child at the end of the day instead of calling the parent? No, we, we don't do that. Um, and the reason we don't do that is because that way we found that, um, uh, difficult to believe this is possible, 
But that way we found that one or two pupils would, would simply try it on. In other words, they'd run the risk of getting their mobile phone caught during the day by, by um, using it in the way that they shouldn't, knowing that they would be able to um, simply be given it back at the end of the day. So, so uh, bitter experiences taught us that, that is, that's not the way forward. Can I add that sometimes, um, just from my experience with New Year 7s, that um, sometimes they're wanting to call someone while they're still in school before they leave. If you are wanting to do that, um, then if um, you can't find myself or uh, Mrs Nash or Mrs Tansley, uh, if you go to the main office and say, you know, oh, I need to contact um, someone from home, then we will help you with a phone call that way. So you're not having to bring that mobile phone out if that's what you're worrying about, which some might be. I'm having a, I've got a few questions here about lockers. Unfortunately, we don't have any lockers in Broomfield. The school is of quite an older building style, as you will have seen, and we don't have the facilities for those. So pupils, that's why them checking their bags each day, and making sure they're only bringing in the books and the PE kit on the days that they need it is really important so they're not carrying so much um, around. Um, a couple of questions on the school day. So we breakfast club, we don't have a breakfast club as such um, at Broomfield. What we have is the canteen opens at 7.45 and pupils start arriving from around then and start to use the playgrounds and things, but that isn't supervised time. Um, there are staff in the canteen and it's they can go in there and get some lunch, get some, lunch, get some breakfast even. Um, and then after school, I've been asked how long can stay after school. Well, usually we encourage pupils to make their way home unless they are involved in any clubs or after school activities. Um, but usually pupils sometimes stay to play table tennis or basketball for a little while after school for sort of 15, 30 minutes sometimes if that's something that they want to do. Uh, and let and me of course, we always, have, we always have the homework club, which runs not just, a, not just before the day, at lunchtime, but also runs at the end of the day, and that that runs for an hour. Um, so uh, quarter past three is when we finish, or quarter past four is when the homework club will finish. And I'm Mrs. just going to finish. I've got. I was just going to say very quickly: if you're asked to stay behind for a sports fixture at school, you will get a letter as a parent giving you the whole list of fixtures for the year whether they are home or away fixtures and what time we will be finishing. So you'll always know where your child is if they're involved in the PE department. And I'm just gonna, I think we've got four last questions that I think I can answer quite easily. So I'm just gonna go through those. One is, how do you fill in the application form with a photo? You don't need to put a photo on the application form, that's fine, we'll take photos of the pupils when they start. What would the children do if it's wet break? We have areas available in the main hall, the sports hall and the gym for pupils to go to and also the usual clubs and things that are inside running. What we tend to find though is they're normally quite keen to stay outside and play table tennis and things, particularly year seven. Um, so sometimes it's more us encouraging them in because it's pouring with rain than them wanting to come in. Um, and I saw a question about immunisations in the school. Um, we work with the Enfield NHS Trust, so they, the school nurses will come in and provide immunisations as and when they're needed as the routine follows for children of the different ages, and you'll always get letters around those. Um, must the trousers have the school logo on? Um, Yes, they do, because that way we make sure that they are the correct trousers, because otherwise it's very easy to end up getting the wrong style of trousers which don't meet the school uniform policy and we don't want parents having to go out and repurchase things. Um, and one final question is, will the rear entrance be open for September? Now, for those of you that don't know, we are hoping to put an entrance in on Powers Lane very soon, which is at the back of the school, at the back of those lovely playing fields you saw on the video. We are still working on that, but obviously um, lockdown and everything has slowed things on that. But we are hopeful that within the next academic year that will open. Um, I think we've answered most questions there. Obviously, if we haven't answered your question or you have further questions when you come away from tonight, then please just use the email address or the phone number that you can see on the screen to ask us any further questions that you may have. Lovely. Um, well, thank you for those questions. They were, they were really, really excellent. 
Um, and I hope you mums and dads, boys and girls, have found this evening interesting and useful. As, as has already been said, we, intending, we intend uploading this presentation to our YouTube channel. We hope to do that shortly for those who were not able to join us this evening and also for you if you wish to see it again. As Ms. Bignall has said, if we can help you uh, any further, in any further way, please do get in touch with us either through the email address that you've been given or through the dedicated phone line. We're really looking forward to, uh, to September and to meeting you all in September. But for the moment, um, please uh, have a good evening uh, and a lovely summer. And we we'll look forward to seeing you again in due course. So thank you very much, everybody.